What types of exercises are we talking about? Should they just go out and run or should they start walking or should they do some like intervals, like run and yeah. stop? I think it depends on what you've been doing. You know, everything's uh, context specific. So if someone's not been training, then they're at risk for injuries and they're going to get the benefits of training from doing anything more than what they were doing. So if you're going from zero, anything is progress. So I don't necessarily encourage people to start running or jogging right away. Just go out, go for a walk. You know, that compared to sitting at home or sitting on the couch, that is way more activity. Do that for 20 minutes. Do it for 30 minutes. Walk 15 minutes in one direction, turn around and walk back home. Do that, and if you have the time for it and the desire to do it the next day, do it again. When I say you should do it three times per week, I mean, that's a minimum. But the human body was made to be used daily. So there's no problem. People, you know, people want to have their rest days, which is fine. But you don't necessarily need to have days off from walking. Some people walk, you know, as part of their daily commute, you know, get off the train, get off the bus, walk for a few blocks. So um, that foundation can be there. And then soon enough, if someone's cardiovascular system is on point and they want to get into weight training, they can start introducing some fundamental strength training patterns. They can do that at the same time as they're doing their cardio, you know, like they can do their cardio and then come back and do some strength training, or they can wait a few weeks and just do them independently. When people start, if they have time for it and they have a, you know, a goal that they want to get after, I do encourage them to do both. So do a little 20 minute walk and then get into some sort of resistance training. Maybe you do upper body on one day, then the next time that you do it, maybe it's a day or two later, you can do lower body, and the next time you can do upper body. But just start tracing these patterns, and the patterns that uh, I always encourage people to do are the fundamental functional movement patterns. So your body has these functional patterns of how it's supposed to move, and um, the whole point of, of training is to do those same patterns that you do in your everyday life, do those patterns in a way that's a little bit more challenging in your training. And as long as your cha- as long as your training is challenging, your life will get easier and easier in terms of the physical demand. So sitting and standing, that's a squat. Bending over and picking something up, that's a deadlift. Kneeling down and then standing back up, that's a lunge. Right. Those are things that that people do every day. They have to do them every day. And if people don't train uh, and let those movements kind of just deteriorate, then they become more challenging and riskier. And then they kind of like lose that function. Eventually, people just, you know, they either use it or lose it. And people lose function. People can't bend over and and touch their toes. Mm. They can't kneel down and tie their shoes. Yeah. Right. They can't sit and stand from a chair without wincing in pain or kind of like leaning and, and using their thigh to stand up. Right. So those are the, the lower body patterns. I like to see, see people train and it can be just a few sets per week. It doesn't have to be every day, but those patterns should be trained. You should, you should do those things on a weekly basis. Okay. And then for the upper body, bear with me for the upper body, you have your push, your horizontal push, your horizontal pull. So pulling into the body. Then you have your overhead push and your overhead pull. If you do those seven things, you're in a pretty good spot. So that was squat, deadlift, which is just like a hinge, any sort of hinge variation where you're bending over at the waist, lunge, which is like a step up, a split squat, a walking lunge, any sort of one-legged thing. Yeah. Um, And then you have, for your upper body, your push, pull, your push and your pull. So those are the the basic patterns I try to try to get people into. Their routine can be three or four movements if they're doing upper body on one day, lower body on the other day. Or do two sets per movement, all seven movements, it's still less than a half hour. Okay. Okay. All right. And most people right now have time. Like right now the you know, the, the limitation for most people isn't time. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of like, you know, desire, desire and equipment and know-how. Yeah, no, it's, you know, and those are great suggestions. Yeah.